morning, ladies and germs. This morning we're talking about the uh, the toner for um, detecting uh, wires remotely that um, that you have. Uh, uh, this is what I use it for. I use it for toning out wires uh, from uh, doing a structured wire install. And that's usually uh, two coaxials, two cat fives. And that's considered structured cable. So you go into your wire closet and you find out that the uh, the sheetrock guys roto drilled a nice hole for you and butchered all your wires and now all the wires that had the labels on them are now at the bottom of the wall so okay now you got a ton of wires and you have no way of identifying them well you take this toner here uh, it's a tone generator this has a bed of nails on it right here and I also installed a uh, an RJ45 and an RJ11 jack onto those as well so that's for telephone and for cat5 uh, so that they'll get into the uh, connectors if it's or if the outlets have already been installed that is so you just can handle all of that and you simply connect it up to the uh, to a pair of wires uh, they don't need to be terminated at the other end. They just have to be connected. They just need one solid. You just need two wires. And the other end of the wire does not need to be connected at all. So, uh, and this is basically, it's, it's, it's essentially, it's a wireless FM antenna. And that's what it does. So, you just get it close and you can, you can detect your wire. All right. So, if this was the wire on the wall, I'd simply go like this, and I could hear, I think the toner is going dead on me. But, yeah, you get it close, and you get the idea, right? Um, I think I left it on last night. Anyway, um, yeah, so this is typically strong enough to, to detect the wire through sheetrock. So if you have a wire buried somewhere, you can actually find it. So you could. And um, so, but this is what we're working on today. We'll get to the toner generator later. Uh, I have a new enclosure for this. It's the exact same as this one, except it's new. And uh, the thing is with this one, this only has a AA battery compartment. And if you see here let's see if you see here I have a 9 volt battery in here which it does fit and I had to do some modification in there it's not pretty in there and it's just a hot glued battery uh, speaker in there and it's essentially at that that side of the board uh, the other side is a circuit board in there and uh, that's what does the magic so uh, let's see we can go over the circuit design uh, let's do that now okay here's the schematic for the board uh, it uses a 386 the LM 386 uh, it's a classic audio amplifier uh, it's real entry-level stuff so uh, this is this this one of my first projects I ever made when I was a kid uh, involved the 386 so I could make an amplifier for my radio and uh, boy did it work uh, this is basically the same principle however this is much simpler and uh, it, it has a different ground configuration than you would use as, if you were using it for like uh, an amplifier for an mp3 player or something that uh, would have a different ground configuration this one here it's so it, it does not matter for this. It really doesn't. I mean, I suppose you could really tweak it out and really get crazy with it, but it, it, this it's, it's not needed for this application. It really isn't. So we don't need a star configuration on this, in which the, a lot of the documentation for this chip doesn't mention that. The old documentation does, from what I can remember. And I remember having a lot of problems getting the... Getting this schematic, getting a schematic like this to work, 
back in the day. And I'm like, why am I getting so much distortion? It's supposed to have 0.2%. I'm like, Where is this coming from? And it was from the ground. And let me get into that for a little bit. Um, where do I start? Grounds, right? Okay, a star configuration, star ground configuration. Um, essentially, you'd start here. This is the ground going to the chip, right? The opposite pin, pin 6, would be the positive side. Four, pin 4 is ground. So, essentially, you'd take this down, and you'd make a connection, right? But you would want... Let's see. You would want this connection and this connection connected, and you'd want these connected directly to this. And you would also want your output grounds or your input grounds rather connected right here like that see that uh, let's see you want to keep this particular ground away from this ground even though they're all connected they these get connected uh, through like a ground plane okay so the rest of these ground connection uh, symbols, they would get connected through the ground plane and then have one trace going to that. And this is what you consider a ground star, a ground star configuration. That would eliminate your audio problems. So once you master this grounding issue with the 386, you can graduate on to bigger and better amplifier uh, chips and bigger and better stuff but this is the main the main thing you would have to deal with for cleaning up your signals right so if it was set up like this the rest of these connections the rest of these ground connections um, can go on the ground plane but once you get to the ground plane you want to keep them isolated so like on a board you'd want it to look something like this and then the rest of the ground plane here right and all of these would be connected and they would go to their individual components whatever they are right and it, would, it would go to whatever the components they're going to and the rest of it would be ground and you could even have ground going around it and things like that but once you want those particular components directly grounded to that one location for these grounds okay and I'm working through the camera so if I'm pointing at weird things and I'm talking about something else that's why um, so that's that uh, but that's not the case with this problem with this with this application so I know I'm kind of dragging this out but it's an important thing for you to maybe notice because on a lot of schematics they will not show you a ground configuration they expect you to know how to lay out a board. Yup, they expect you to know what you're doing. <laughs> so, yeah, trial and error, and yeah, I, this, that was a real, it took a long time. And I ended up finding out about star ground connections in a magazine. It was the only way, and the only reason why I found out how to how to make that work back in the day and uh, ever since then I haven't had any problems with grounds <laughs> so it was a very valuable lesson let's see what is this circuit doing well we got your inductor probe here this is your input and this is basically an RF antenna it's essentially what it is it's going through this uh, this filter here it's basically a high-pass filter and uh, Let's see, we have some, uh, um, some, uh, how do I start this? How do I explain this stuff? Uh, take a deep breath. All right, 9 volt battery, right? It goes to the switch, you hit the switch. What happens? We're going to get voltage to the chip, which is good, right? So we're going to get positive and negative voltage to the chip. So that's going to be active right off the bat. To see how it goes right there but this is also going through this resistor and it also goes right to this uh, 
MOSFET here. And because it's also going through here, this is going to turn this on, which means we're going to get current flowing through here. But while it's doing that, it's also going to flow through here. And this is like a, it's almost like a back feed, okay? Especially because of this and this, they're going to be feeding back through here. And this is where you're going to go from your non-inverting input and your inverting input, or non-inverting and inverting. And uh, essentially, we do some magic in here, and we get an output. Okay, it goes through this RC filter here, through another RC, uh, through another filter, to clean up the signal, and output to our speaker. Okay, and we get sound. Get it? Uh, this capacitor here simply does a, uh, uh, it's a gain modification. Uh, it bypasses something inside this chip. I believe it's just a resistor, and uh, what it does is it multiplies it by 200 dB. Okay? And so it, it's an ampl it amplifies whatever signal is coming through here. And it shoots out. That's it. The rest of these capacitors, um, they're just bypass caps. They're decoupling caps. Uh, the values here really don't matter. You could, we could drop this as a 1 mega ohm we can drop that down to 10k it would still work um, all these values really don't matter uh, they do and they don't uh, they they adjust the um, the sensitivity of this MOSFET really okay but yeah so that's that let's take a look at the computer and we'll see what the what the layout looks like okay we're on our keycad software this is the schematic software that I use. And that's, you can see it's the same circuit. Uh, let's see. I think I've added some, uh, some voltage levels on the, uh, on the schematic, on the, uh, on the capacitors. Let's see here. I think I need to add the ground plane. The ground plane on this circuit does not matter one bit. It won't matter. Uh, it's the same exact circuit that I'm using now. I know it works. It's tried and true. It's fine. Uh, let me just get rid of that. We're going to see one connect, uh, two connections unconnected here. This is just a, uh, um, a zero ohm resistor that's doing a, a jumper. All right. And this is our board layout. You can see the six holes there. Uh, this hole here and this hole here are simply uh, breakouts on the board so they don't uh, these aren't uh, mounting holes but the four on the outside corners are uh, let's see, this would be our switch it's perfectly located for this board for that particular uh, for that particular uh, enclosure so it, it fits really well in the hand uh, I can show you a 3D view if you want to see that. Let's see if we can bring that up. Okay. I don't know how well color is showing up here. But, uh, the induction probe, I have that coming out from the underneath. And you can see the switch there. So you can just use... Uh, you don't have to use one of these right angle uh, pen cut headers. You don't have to do that. You just simply put a wire going through there. You might want to put a, uh, a ferrite bead on either end of the induction probe. But I don't have one on there. It might help. But in my application, it doesn't matter. This is that, uh, that zero ohm resistor we were talking about just now. And let's simply jump in that trace to get back to this, uh, to this ground pad here. But essentially, essentially what I have created here is a ground connection. It is a star ground. Essentially, that's what it is. Uh, the only difference would be this right here would be directly connected to that. And then 
right to this pad here, which is essentially what it's doing. Now, if I take away these uh, these components here, they're still there. What happened? The components are still there. Oh, they, they are surface mount. There we go. There we go. Sorry about that. I thought they were through hole for a minute. I clicked the wrong button. Anyway, so if this pad here goes directly here, at the and but it, it, it's fine. The way I have this board lined up, it's fine. And the way that this resistor is giving this a ground plane here. It's essentially, it is a ground plane. It is a star connection. Essentially, it is. Uh, never mind the, uh, the artifacts on the holes here. It's just uh, the computer doesn't know how to handle that. It's supposed to be, the board's supposed to be cut there. But, uh, but that's the board. And uh, this is ready to be toner transferred or uh, photo resist. We can do that. Etch the board. Populate the board, throw it in the throw it in the enclosure, and we're good to go. And it should work first time. It's it's tried and true. Okay. So I don't know if we're gonna do that right now. We might make that part two, but that's where we are now. Okay. So that's the board layout. That was the, uh, the software I happened to use, and I'm also one of the developers for that software. I don't know if you guys knew that. I don't contribute as much as I'd like to, but I mean, there's other pressing things in time, you know, but uh, I'm on the development team, so I, I, I use a bleeding-edge copy of the software nearly every, every week. I download a copy of it. And, keep on top of the libraries and stuff like that so files are constantly changing during that process but uh, let's see I'm getting ahead of myself uh, let's see let's get you the bill of materials the complete bill of materials including the enclosure from polycase um, let's see okay and there you go. It'll give you a, a jump start on on what you want to do. I'll give you the uh, the board layout, front and back, the silk screen, front and back, the schematic, and bill of materials. And we'll do that. And part two will be etching and population, and probably. The, the, the rest of the video, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so expect to see a part two on this. Uh, hey, thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate it. Good night, ladies and germs.